Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Danny Miranda podcast. I'm so excited for this one because it is a return to how it started. I started this podcast in really the thoughts of it started in July of 2020 when I put out on Twitter, who wants to talk on the phone? And I had such phenomenal conversations with people that I figured I should probably record some of these conversations. And so this episode is me recording those conversations again. I put out on Twitter a few days ago that I was going to be talking to listeners of the podcast, and I got over 50 responses from people on this Google form that I put in. And if you want to get notified about the latest of these happenings, they'll probably happen on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter at Hey Danny Miranda. But for this episode, I'm going to call some of the people who responded to this form for the call in show. And I'm excited to talk to them, to connect with them. And I'm going to use a, a random number generator to help me figure out exactly which of these responses to choose from. And uh, I'm excited. And if you guys like these, we can do more of them. So let's have some fun. I don't know where this is going to go. Let's begin, though. So the first number generated was 15. Start it off. Hello? Hey, Zach. You're on the Danny Miranda podcast. How's it going? <laughs> no way, Danny. What's good? I'm living, bro. You're the first caller for this special edition. How you doing? Let's go. I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm, uh, I'm excited to kick it off with uh, this first call. I have no idea how this is going to go, but I'm really excited to try out a new format and see what what happens let's go let's get it bro see th this is hype this is what it's about hell yeah so tell me tell me about yourself tell me about what you're up to on this fine thursday afternoon yeah bro give me 30 seconds <laughs> let's go. and we're good i'm just walking outside i love it <laughs> yeah dude bro so I'm good. I'm actually just recovering. This is like my first day. I'm taking calls again. I just got my wisdom teeth out the other day. Oh my god! So, so that was lit. That was uh, that was a big uh, test for this uh, for this month. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, we're chilling, bro. But um, here, let me uh, let me on speaker, Danny. What's good, bro? Dude, so we've exchanged some messages on, on Instagram. So I know you're familiar with the podcast. And I'm reading through your the, the questions that you filled out right now. So cool. A challenge you would like to leave people with. Be positive even when it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Was, was there a time in your life when it felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel? Oh, yeah, totally, bro. Um, yeah, dude. My bad. I'm just getting my bearings. You threw me off. I didn't. I didn't know this was coming. Yeah, but dude. Get, I couldn't be more more excited. But yeah, <laughs> dude. So to answer your question, yes. Um. So basically, um, I'm gonna say 2019. Hmm. I was a sophomore in college. Yep, sophomore. I was going to uh, Buffalo University of Buffalo, hmm. and. Um, Let's just say I, I, I was basically kind of the opposite of the person I am now. Um, not positive. Uh, I'm from Long Island. I know you are too. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty sick. Um, basically, just like growing up, super, super normal childhood. Um, super blessed. Super great parents. Um Everything, uh, everything normal life, played sports, um, wasn't too good at sports. Uh, then around middle school realized that I was just playing sports because like my parents signed me up and, uh, wasn't for me. Um, and fast forward 
in high school, um, basically school was never really for me. Um, so I've always just kind of been doing my own thing. Um, and unfortunately in high school, I'm I was sure kind of, whoa, chill Siri. Um, I was kind of, um, I kind of got caught up with the wrong, like wrong crowd early. Um, just, uh, just from not like being like good in school, um, like grade wise, like paying attention wise. Um, I guess I got, uh, caught up like with, uh, like some DJs from Long Island, you could say. And, um, so pretty much like from like my freshman year of high school to like sophomore year of college, it was basically just like a lot of partying mm-hmm. and just like kicking it with the homies, like drinking and smoking was like basically all we did. And, um, so basically up until, uh, 2019, I was, uh, I was, kind of kind of going down the wrong path um unfortunately i ended up getting caught i don't know well you're from long island so you might be familiar um but i ended up getting caught up like in the xanax scene unfortunately um around like my junior year of high school um like i said i was kind of caught up with the wrong kids doing the wrong stuff and kind of from basically I was like 17 junior year high school to, um, till I was like 20 in sophomore college. I was almost doing Xanax almost every day. Wow. Uh, kind of insane. Um, I know I'm coming in hot with this, but, um, just trying to like lay the ground of like where, where like, um, my mindset was at the mm-hmm. time. I basically, basically didn't have one. Uh, like I said, um, growing up, like, uh, I kind of just got into stuff just because people around me were doing stuff, whether it was good or bad, like sports I got into because that's just what everyone did. Um, and then realized I didn't like sports, so stopped doing that. Um, and then ended up like getting into the party scene just because that's what everyone around me was doing. Um, and like it totally consumed my life until, um, I was a sophomore in college, uh, and it was like my first month at Buffalo. I went to Nassau Community College for my freshman year, um, somehow did good enough to get into, uh, Buffalo to go away that next year. And like a month into being at Buffalo, um, I tried to like, get serious like with what I was doing so I was like okay I want to like stop this Xanax shit Mm. stop tried to stop cold turkey um and ended up like having a seizure from withdrawals oh my god uh, yeah like about like eight nine days into that and it totally um totally changed my life like for the better um after that I totally woke up uh realized that like it was my gift from god that like um it was like basically like my second chance to like stop fucking around, like start taking shit seriously. Um, so, so that happened. Um, and stop doing all chill Siri again. Um, (laughs) so stop doing all that shit. Stop hanging out with all those kids. Literally, um, went from like hanging out with basically everyone and like going to parties and shit to like coming to a, like loner and just doing my own thing. Um, and just like, um, started to like figure out where I wanted to go with stuff. Cause I knew it wasn't school. I was just in school to like party and meet people and shit. Um, so, uh, that happened. And then like, just, I got into like Gary V's content and, um, started just changing my mindset. Um, like I said, I, I, I am definitely, um, well, more positive than I used to be. I just used to be like just pissed off for no reason. Um, and just like always in a bad mood just for no reason. Like, I mean, you know, like we grew up on Long Island. I mean, uh, it was definitely a great environment. Um, 
for the most part. Uh, so like it, uh, like after, after I had that seizure, it, um, it just made me realize how, uh, like lucky I was just to like have this like chance. Hmm. And, um, yeah, like I said, dropped all those friends, dropped, um, basically everything. I dropped out of school, uh, cause it wasn't for me, uh, got into Gary V's content and actually got into like, um, at the time it was like 2019 and I was watching his like 2017, 2018 garage sale, like his flip challenge content mm. and, uh, ended up getting into like, just going to garage sales and shit. Uh, after I dropped out of college, uh, I was working full time at this place delivering wings, uh, it's like six days a week. And I thought that was going to be like my career, um, at least like while I was figuring it out. And while I was working there, got into the garage sale stuff, um, just like every, every shift I wasn't working, I'd hit a thrift store and on the weekends I'd hit like garage sales. And I just started flipping stuff on eBay with like $150 and um, slowly but surely grew that and um, eventually transferred out of garage sales and like thrift stores and got into the business model called online arbitrage, which um, is still a little bit of the business model I do today. Um, and like, since I dropped out in 2019, um, probably started like the eBay stuff, uh, towards the, towards like the end of the year, towards like the beginning of 2020. Um, I've with like that $150, I've grew my Amazon and eBay business to a little over like 3.6 mil in revenue. Um, just uh, just off of learning what Gary V taught me, basically. Wow. And uh, congrats, man. And yeah, dude, it's uh, we're just getting started. I know I have friends that um, literally have done ten x, a hundred x those numbers, but um, I'm definitely super proud of it. Um, definitely didn't think I could accomplish anything like this when I started. I just kept just one foot in front of the other and just kept going. Um, and like now we're here. Um, so I know that was all over the place. I, um, I don't have a good, I don't have a good, um, intro yet. I'm working on my intro. Um, after like listening to all your fire podcasts and like all these people that are so good at speaking. Um, so working on that, but like, I guess that's my like short, um, my little short story. <laughs> I, I love it, man. Thank you for sharing. And that sounds quite the journey. What, what are your friends like today compared to what they were like back then? And what do you, your friends back then say about, have you communicated with them at all? Totally bro. So, I mean, basically my friends today are kind of the complete opposite of my friends back then. I mean, um, like back then I did have like my, like a core, like group of friends, like eight or 10 kids that were like, my boys, but then I also just like hung out with just like anyone and everyone that was just trying to like smoke or drink or just like do something degen. So I was, I was hanging out with people that really weren't my friends at the end of the day, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, but as for like kind of my closer friends that I was friends with, um, they were good. Um, it was just, uh, definitely, definitely no one really had a drive to like do their own thing. Like, um, like all my friends now, like a lot of my friends now are all into business for the most part are all like doing their own thing. Um, and they're all like super motivating. Like you have an idea and they don't like shoot it down. They don't say it's dumb. Like they encourage you to do it. How do you um, find those friends? So I solely found all those friends in, through the internet, uh, yeah, through Discord, through Instagram, through YouTube, mm -hmm. um, exactly like how I met you, uh, mm -hmm. just like hitting people up in the DMs. Uh, like I said, after after college, I basically, um, like after the seizure thing, I basically stopped hanging out with everyone that I knew. Um, 
which was like just like people from my hometown or like people I met like um, in Buffalo or whatever, uh, and basically dropped everyone and uh, even like like my high school friends after after we all left high school, we all kind of drifted apart um, for the most part, except for like one of them that I'm still like good friends with. Um, but yet, yeah, basically, my old friends were the complete and utter opposite of my new friends. And um, how, how old are you now? I'm 24 now. Yeah, this is, I think this is interesting because it, it happened to me as well, where when I was like in my early 20s, it felt like it was a bigger deal to like not be friends with people that I was friends with in high school. And I still am close with a bunch of people from high school and college, but I feel like as I've gotten older, I've become more at peace with becoming a new version of myself. I'm curious if that's also been the case for you. Oh yeah, bro. Uh, 1000%. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more. And, um, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, I like wanted to stop hanging out with my old, like my core group of like high school friends, but it was more, I guess, like we, like at the end of the day, um, we kind of, we were kind of just, I mean, um, we were all definitely like really good friends, but I mean, um, I guess like we were friends for like the wrong reasons. And then like, once everyone like started doing their own thing and like, um, like after like all like the high school parties were over and shit, like, I guess like at the end of the day, we didn't really click as much as we thought we did. Mm -hmm. Um, at least like compared to like the people that I surround myself with now. Um, like, like we, we click down to a T, um, like beliefs, goals, mm -hmm. uh, what we think is possible, which is anything, um, just like, uh, just so much, um, <laughs> dude, again, my bad. If I, um, if I am not, uh, like executing this, uh, dude great but dude i love this there's no there's no right way to execute it. there's no wrong way so i i appreciate you picking up the phone um is there anything i can help answer for you or anything you think i could be helpful with um yeah dude wow um so cool danny uh love this but um yeah i mean a quick question i want to ask you is like um so so for me it's like so i do the e-com stuff and i love it and i started it um i kind of just like stumbled into it and like i said i love it but i don't know if it's like my like like passion and mm -hmm. like i could tell how passionate about like what you do you like you are it's like the podcast and just talking to people and everything. I'm just wondering, like, how did you know that like this was it? Because it seems like this is your, like, this is your thing. Like you couldn't, um, see yourself doing anything else. Yeah. And, like, um, yeah. For me, it started with listening to myself and spending a lot of time just in meditation, a lot of time in journaling in reflection of my past of like, what was I doing as a kid and following that call was like a, a common thread. And it's interesting because I, I knew the place to go down initially, which was like writing. I've always been writing on the internet since I can, I was like 12 years old, right? When I started my first plug. And so it's like, all right, going back to that was a helpful indicator to then help me start the podcast because the podcast was just an extension of, of writing. So it, it started for me with 20 minutes of meditation in the morning, looking at myself, looking at my thoughts, which I'd never done or never considered useful. And that was the start of it. So I started meditating 20 minutes in the morning in September of 2019. By September of 2020, the podcast had begun. So that, that was my journey with it and finding my passion and finding the thing that I could see myself doing forever. But I'm curious. For you, what were the things you enjoyed doing as a kid with no expectations? Love it, dude. Super cool. Great answer. Um, 
But yeah, bro. So, I mean, what I loved doing as a kid with no expectations. So, I mean, basically the only thing I did as a kid, I went from, I basically went from playing video games 10, 12 hours a day Mm. um, from like elementary school, middle school to high school. Um, And then I really just got into, unfortunately, like, just the Long Island party scene consumed, like, my life. Right. So it was, like, I really, um, I didn't, I didn't do much. Like, I, I played video games and I kicked it with the homies. Hmm. Um, and so. What like, was it about that, video games that really inspired you or that you were lit up about? What do you think so, it was? That's super interesting. I guess, um. So what clicked for me was just like, I guess like I was just like a natural born like gamer. Like Hmm. uh, I remember like my mom telling me I was like super young. I was like five or something and we were away somewhere and it was like when like I first like just, I I totally forget the game, but whatever game it was, it was like some arcade game and we were away somewhere and it was, like, one of the first times, like, I really, like, hopped on a game to, like, play. And, like, my mom said, supposedly, like, like there was, like, a huge crowd around me, um, like, watching me play this game. Oh, wow. I was doing, like, super well or whatever. And so I was always just, like, really good at video games. And I guess it really clicked because I always, like, struggled in school. And I guess even, like, struggled, like, with sports and like that's the only really thing i could like remember like school and sports and so i guess like the fact that like video games clicked and i was good um i think that's what i really like just like something that didn't feel like a struggle mm. um and it just felt like um felt like uh like it was something that like i could crush when i didn't even really know like what i was doing um, when was the last time you played a video game? I'm going to say a long time now. So basically I'm very, um, so my personality mm-hmm. is super, whatever we're doing, we're doing extremely hard, whether yeah. it's video games or unfortunately partying back in the day yep. or for the last three years, it's been business. It's, uh, mm-hmm. I kind of get tunnel vision. Yeah. I can um, relate. So, yeah, so basically the last three years, basically zero video games. Um, yeah, like it, um, like I said, it's, so uh, when I get into stuff, it consumes me. Um, so, uh, <laughs> the last three years has just been, just been business and, and also uh, crypto. I'm a big, uh, big crypto guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I mean, crypto is a form of video game itself, and I'm sure business is as well for you. And it's like, it's understanding the elements of video games. Let's say you don't want to go down, you're set on not going down the video game route, which I don't even know if that that is right or wrong. You would know better. But it's like figuring out for yourself, okay, what are the elements of video games that I enjoyed and how can I do that more? And it could be you know, the feeling of, of leveling up. It could be the feeling of controlling certain things. I'm not sure because I've, I've never really been a huge video game guy myself, but I think it's worth considering the, the parallels because I think we find our zone of genius or, or our, our innate gifts based on the things we were doing as a child. I, I find that to be the case so, so often. Yeah, yeah, dude. Love it, bro love it and yeah it's um it's yeah this is such a fucking cool conversation bro i want to thank you for taking the time of course uh it's definitely made my day for sure and um yeah dude it's uh that's that's i want to like i want to circle around and like this is this is like definitely like over the last i'd say like year or so um because like i really i really only been taking everything serious basically the last like couple years since Mm. like 2020 and i got into all this stuff um the first two years was strictly just like 
the business part. And then I'd say this last year I've got into like trying to like figure out like, um, like my passion and like self development and all that stuff. And definitely like starting to find out, um, that I love just like chopping it up with people like you Mm. and like people like the, like the friend group I made, um, through like Instagram and discord and shit. And like the little, like, uh, the little gang we got going on. Um, so like, it's funny because basically when I started this, I, I, there's no way I would have picked up this phone. Um, like a ran like a random caller or like even uh like ask someone to like hop on a phone call to chop it up cuz like i used to be very um uh, like introverted for sure and just like um not like to talk to people at all that's like a reason i started the amazon stuff i was like what's something like what's something i could start that like i don't have to talk to anyone mm. and like i could like it could be a job that like I don't have to go into an office or hop on a sales call or um, like basically interact with people. Um, like that's why I started the Amazon and the eBay stuff because it was like kind of you could do it solo and just get it like get your stuff done on your own and um, not really like have to talk to anyone. But like over the last couple of years, it, it's funny how how that basically like flipped and like now my favorite thing every day is like hopping on a phone call with a a homie or like a new homie Mm -hmm. um and like just getting to know them like whether they're into like business or not um just like someone i meet um like on on uh instagram doing something so it's uh it is it's really cool um, to have this conversation because it's, uh, it's definitely making me like, um, like reflect, um, mm. like a little bit. Um, cause I, I often, I guess I don't, uh, I don't like really ever, not like ever think about this stuff, but it's hard to, um, I guess it's hard to like get the, like get this, uh, conversation going. Um, and it's, I love it. I love it, bro. So thank you for the call. It's uh, this is amazing. My pleasure, man. And it it speaks to what you're talking about. It's it's like we can play so many different lives in just one. And I think so often we can get in the mindset or the belief that we are only one type of person. I'm only somebody who's an introvert. I'm only someone who likes video games. I'm only someone who likes to party. I'm only, and I think something that I've also personally realized is like. I can live so many different lives in just one. And I'm hearing that reflected back in your story as well. And that's a super cool thing that solidifies the power of changing the and the power of of becoming different. If you're not happy with the current place you are at in life, you can change and you can be different because I've lived a different life than the one I'm living right now. You've lived a different life. And that's a magical thing. Yeah, dude, I love that. And I don't, I don't know where this is going, but if anyone ever hears this, um, yeah, I definitely, if you made it this far and, um, like you're going through something, whether it's, uh, whatever it is, it's, uh, you can, you can change it yourself for sure. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta do it. It's like, what's uh, one action step you, you could leave people with to take a, a different path in life? Yeah, totally. So it's like, um, yeah. So basically main, main thing I'd say is, um, a- anyone can do anything, um, big or small, no matter if you think it's impossible or if it's like, even if it's like, uh, even if it's a small task, it's just, uh, if, if you actually put your mind to it and put some effort into it and like get serious about it, whether it's like working out or like wanting to like stop doing something, uh, like a habit or whatever the case is, um, it's, it's definitely possible 
to do, even when it seems like uh, like all the walls are closing in. It's uh, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I love that. Uh, is like what I uh, I always say to people if like um, someone like comes to me like oh yeah like I'm having a bad week with like Amazon or I'm having a bad day. It's just like there's there's always something like positive to look forward to. Um, which I definitely didn't always think like this. Um, I always just, uh, I guess like I kind of not even had like a, a victim mentality, but like, just like, I don't know the word, but I guess, um, I kind of, yeah, I don't know the word, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I hope. I hope that like answers it. I know that wasn't good. That wasn't good. Um, <laughs> I'm all over the place, dude. You just got your <laughs> wisdom teeth out, and it's all good. And <laughs> yeah, dude, this is. Uh, it's been a wild week, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh I I appreciate you so much sharing the story, sharing some wisdom, and and giving your real self to uh, this conversation. And so, thank you so much. It was an honor to get to talk to you. And I'm excited to see where your journey unfolds. Dude, Danny, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy and um, my boy is blown up over here. So I, I, like I said, I really appreciate your time. And it's funny, like, I, I don't think I, I said it to you, but like, um, like ever since I started listening to your stuff, I was like, damn, like, this is a guy that like, again, like, this is a guy that like you want to surround yourself with. Like one day I'd love to get to talk to this guy mm -hmm. and um, just to, like, just to hear like what he has to say. Um, and definitely super grateful that um, you took the time to call me, man. And um, just want to say thanks and uh, keep crushing it, bro. Because I mean, I only found you a couple months ago and um I saw you blow up quick and it's, it's literally just the beginning, bro. Um, super excited to watch your journey. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the kind words and thank you for all the optimism. I, I really appreciate you, Zach. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I appreciate you. Yeah, Danny, dude, have a great day, bro. And, um, we'll definitely be in touch and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep listening to the pod and picking up those gems, dude. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Have a wonderful day. All right, Danny. Talk soon, bro. Have a good one. Peace. Call number one complete. Okay, let's let's keep it going. That was wonderful. As I live and breathe. <laughs> Tony Which Nash, welcome to the Danny Miranda Podcast. How are you doing today? What an honor to be here, my guy. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. I'm so excited that you were number 49 and you got the yeah. random number generated, hit you up, and here we are today. Here we are. On this beautiful Thursday, March 23rd. Dude, have you taken the time to just, I know you are like very gratuitous for like everybody else, but man, the hustle and commitment, and I know people don't like to talk about hustle, but like the amount of consistency you put into this thing is awesome. I appreciate it's that. Again. Thank you, man. I mean, it, it's fueled by love and, and gratitude for all the wonderful people who will sit down with me. And um, I, I'm just really grateful for it. So, yeah, I, I appreciate your acknowledgement. And why don't you tell the people a little something about Tony Nash? What's going on in this fine day? Dude, you know, uh, so I, you know, just like Danny, I'm also a podcast host at the Gotcha Six Podcast. And then my normal job is I'm an active duty uh, army officer incredible active duty army officer holy smokes i mean what is that like i've been doing this for 13 years my wife's also in the army um every day is a different challenge and to back to your point right like i get to sit down with incredible people at work every day who come from all facets of life um whether they were born in America, not born in America, and they just all share the same love and values that make this country so special. So it's an honor. Did you always know you wanted to be in the military? No, I, uh, I was shown the, 
not the door, but I was shown the opportunity when I was in high school. Uh, my football coach was a West Point grad and said that was, an, uh, you know, uh, something to pursue. And as soon as I found out about the United States Military Academy, I fell in love with it. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, do my undergrad there. And were there any moments when you wanted to not be in the military or has it been smooth sailing? I don't Can you speak about that? Like, even if you... <laughs> So I've done I've done two deployments to Afghanistan. Oh my god! Um, and gone to ranger school, stuff like that. And it's one of those things where, at the end of the day, the pro, like the positives outweigh the negatives, right? And there's been like tough negatives, right? Losing soldiers, losing friends, mm. both inside and outside of the military, for various reasons. Uh, oh. Some during you know combat related. Um, but at the end of the day, it always comes back down to the people, right? And that that's the love that you talked about. Um, why you keep showing up for the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. What, what could you take us to like some, one of the more difficult moments and like, how did you get through it? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Um, I think anytime well, you get used to this life of transition, right? Because I've moved, we've moved three times in one year, mm. right? And you're, you're, you have to get settled quickly establish yourself, set up your position more or less, not to talk, not to sound like I'm reaching from the jargon jar, um, and then get established and then kind of move out. And every time though, you're a different person, right? The, I forget the quote, um, where, you know, you're never the same person that enters the river twice. Mm. You know, so that in and of itself is hard. And then obviously, you know, dealing with loss of anyone, um, is always difficult. I, I had a job once, uh, honored to do it. I was selected through training uh, to go be a casualty notification officer. So I had to go in full uniform to notify a family of their loved member being loved, loved one being deceased. Mm. And, and that was that was hard because you have to like you have a specialized you have a speech that you have to memorize, and you have to hold it together. And you're literally going there and telling them this news that will forever change their life. So that you're you're meeting like sense of duty with empathy. How do you even prepare yourself mentally for that? Just like anything else, right? Like there's training. You get you you do the reps and you during the training you practice that with other people. But it's one of those things like in the moment, you just have to you just have to do it. Right? There's I'm sure anyone can relate to being in a situation where they've trained for or, you know, done the reps and prepared for and then when you're in it you're just like i just have to keep moving in order to get to the other side of this because it's not that's the other thing it's like it's not about you it's about them yeah right and you need to be able to to keep it together because you're going to be able to just give the message and then you're going to have to leave and they have to be forever with it you know did you know those people? Like no, no, no. Okay, yeah, because I can imagine that would add another layer of difficulty to it. Yeah, and that and that usually when that you do that, it doesn't come from the same unit. Gotcha. They're, they're On purpose. Of, yeah, yeah. But then there's other, you know, there's other layers to it as time goes on, making sure the like the benefits and all the things are done and handled properly, and that's usually, you know, that can take months to years to get all situated Mm. depending on the circumstances damn well that yeah go on no i was and then i think that was kind of what you and i have talked about in the past is like identity right like how do you how do you continue to go on when someone that's been central to your identity is no longer there and that unfortunately for, you know, is, is a part of life, but the other the flip side of that is like, because that is in life, we live in this life of transition right, where there's these moments that can forever change us. We're able to have, we have to be able to kind of step back and be like, this is the situation. There's not a lot I can change with certain things, but there's other things going forward that I can react to and understand and you know have to overcome 
Yeah. I'm what what have been the different identities in your own life? I think it's one of those things like in your twenties you think you're gonna be this person for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And the more you experience life, the more you realize your identity is forever changing, right? Whether you have kids, don't have kids, um, in a serious relationship, married, single, whatever. But understanding what makes you fulfilled, like fills your cup up, Hmm. is really when I've seen and talking to other people, um, you know, having done the podcast for almost two years now, Mm. like that is when people are able to kind of push forward through those levels of adversity when, when they do show up because there's a greater, there's a greater sense of purpose. Always about other people when it's about other people. And I can even imagine that like walking to someone's door and telling them that their loved one died. It's like, even that is in service of something greater than yourself. In well, that absolutely. Moment. And that was, like I said, that's, that was an absolute honor to yeah. be able to be selected to do that. Yeah. You, you have here on what topics you want to discuss. You said identify and using your 10 year self from now as a role model. How do you go about doing that? That, that at least is what drives me. Mm. Um, and I know you've talked about this in a couple episodes, um, where, you know, it's about who you are now and looking at what actions you want, need to be able to take to get to where you want to go mm. and continuing to focus on that because just like, you know, you don't get to 300 plus episodes by not being consistent, mm-hmm. right? In order to continue to have that role model 10, 10 years from now, you're continuing to take those actions even when it's hard and you don't want to. Like you don't want to wake up and you don't want to go work out. But part of your goal is being physically fit enough to compete at a high level or, you know, just have overall health and wellness um, and recognizing that it doesn't, you need to be able to have grace with yourself when you fall, but also grace to pick yourself back up and keep moving. When was the last time you fell from looking at your 10 year vision of yourself, the person you wanted to be, and how do you pick yourself up from that fall? I, we, I mean, people fall every day. I fall every day. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's how I'm able to grow um, and continue to refine what that looks like because the 10 year mark isn't, 10 years from 2023, the 10 year mark is from whatever day it is. So it's all, it's always 10 years out. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you, going back to what we talked about, when you start to fulfill and find something, because it's, it's hard to describe, but when you have a sense of purpose and you're driven, it can become obsession very quickly. Um, I know Zach talks about that a lot. Um, and, you stay, you stay fixated. So sometimes you'll continue to like work on something and you'll forget to eat. You know, I think we, that was a conversation that we recently had. Um, but knowing that you, you're not doing it alone, right? Part of the reason I like I started the podcast was there's a thing in the name where it's called walking the plank. And I've never, I don't, I have never like fact checked anybody on this, but here's essentially how the ceremony goes. You have the individual soldier, facing the formation and this is a, like a retirement ceremony and as the ceremony is being concluded the formation will do an about face which is 180 degrees so essentially then sold the single retiring service member is just looking at the back of the formation and then the service member has to execute an about face which is 180 degrees uh and then start walking down the, the ship deck to whatever's on the other side for them and i, I get emotional when i tell this story uh and it's <laughs> it's when people walk to nothing, right? You've given all of this to your loved ones, or you've given all to service, and your loved ones have fallen to the wayside. Maybe there's divorce, or you've pushed everybody away in spite of service, and you have nothing on the other side, right? So it's about bringing others along with you, but not losing yourself entirely. Because at the end of the day, you know, they sing a song in the army, the army goes rolling along. And that's the same with all services, right? So it's that, I wouldn't even say balance, it's like an equilibrium. You need to continue to have in mind 
on that 10 year chase for your role model. Break down for me exactly why that makes you so emotional. Because I've seen it. Hmm. I've physically watched people give everything and come away with nothing. And part of the emphasis of, or the like, antithesis of starting the podcast was getting people exposed to others who have served or are currently serving that have found purpose um, elsewhere outside of service and they're continuing to help others pursue, you know, enjoy life and leave the world better than you found it. Right. Those are kind of like my two checkbooks when I have to do any like major life decisions. Um, and I think majority of people would agree those are also theirs. Um, but by doing that, it allows people to continue to be at least grounded in their values because you're constantly looking at them or not looking, living your values, you know? Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm curious, like when you, when you look at the examples of people who have given a lot, but lost themselves almost in the process, what, what are the commonalities? I think there is a part of it that, I'd say there's probably there's a little bit of ego mm. um, where it all needs to be on their shoulders as opposed to like not so, not so much of delegation over time and the other piece is like being able to ask others for help which kind of plays into the ego piece mm. I love that and yeah. and tell me about the podcast how's that going and Dude, yeah since, since we since I started the podcast um a hundred weeks ago, it's been a weekly episode ever since, regardless wow. of move, deployment, training events. And, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to be 20, you have to record 20 episodes in two weeks, right? Oh my God. Uh, but that's just, that's how it goes, right? Because you're committed to it. And there's been times where it's like you drop an episode on Monday and Friday, you're like, I have no idea who's going to be on this week. Um, and then you realize, like, I, I don't want to live that way anymore because I enjoy the, the way I'm creating and I enjoy the con this content piece. Um, so you start to then build systems around that, right? To go back to your earlier question of, like, you know, failing or setbacks, whatever you want to call them, um, that's how you learn and grow. I I mean, that's dedication to do 20 episodes in a week or or to, you know, stay consistent with it for 100 straight weeks. That's that's no joke. Congrats, yeah. man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Is there Jimmy, any... This has, been, this has been a blast, brother. I really appreciate you taking the time. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to do this. I'm excited to talk to you. And uh, is, do you think... Is there anything that I can help you with? Keep, keep putting out the message uh, of the love and the gratitude and the obsession. I love it. I will. Right. Keep combating complacency. I I can do that, Tony. I appreciate you, brother. The Got Your Six podcast. Anything else to plug? That's it, my man. You know, dude. Absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for answering some of my questions, and God bless you, man. You too, brother. Thank you. Peace. Wonderful call from Tony. Oh man, these are these are a bunch of fun. Let's see if we can get another caller on the line. Hello? Hey, Samuel. This is Danny. You're on the Danny Miranda podcast. How's it going? Hey, hey Danny. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks, thanks for calling me. My pleasure. Thanks for answering. How's your day I going? appreciate it. Going, going great so far. How about you? It's going excellent, man. Just talking to incredible people, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to connect. Yeah, man, for sure. Was, was 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 this the time that 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 like, the podcast was going to be? It was originally supposed to be on Monday, but now it's on Thursday, and we're all over the place. But yeah, it's everything's right where it's supposed to be. So. Yeah, so you asked, I asked, what topics do you want to discuss? And you said 
one thing that I find we both share is that we've both been into improving and have been relatively successful since a young age. I would love to learn more about how you got to this point and what makes your mindset different from other people. Also talk about how someone can improve their mindset in order to teach their potential. This is all about me, but I was curious about you. Yeah, man. Of, of course. Why, when, when, what do you want to ask me? Who are you? And how did you come uh, stumble upon the podcast? Why did it resonate or why did the social accounts resonate? Whatever you saw. Okay, so I'm Samuel. I, I, live, in, I live in Victoria, Canada. I'm, I'm actually 17 right now. I'm, oh, wow. I'm super into business. Starting a podcast myself, actually. I don't, I don't know if you saw on, on the Google form. Hell yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting a self-improvement podcast right now. And and I, I, I own a car detailing business too, which, which is actually going really well. And, and yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a really ambitious guy. And I, I really hope in the future to, to be making a mark on the world and really impact, impact as many lives as I can. Dude, you're 17. That's incredible. Holy smokes. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I found out about you on the You Can't Chew podcast, actually. And I, I thought, like, your, your podcast looked amazing. And, and I, was, I, was, I was, like, listening to some of the episodes. I was like, holy shit, like, this is exactly where I want to be. Like, I, I just thought it looked awesome. Like, I love how, I love how you're doing challenges mm. at, at the end of every podcast to, to make, make, like, just, just to make it more practical, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's an important piece to it for me that we uh, take some action from the things that we learn or or think about. So, so you're 17 years old, but you're you're tapped into this world. When was the first sign that you were like, "All right, I, I want to improve or I want to be better than I was yesterday"? When did that first thought come into your mind? Honestly, like I've I've, I've been super into improving pretty much pretty much my whole life, like. It, it really just started with me having low self-esteem, mm. which I like to think of think of as like the best problem that, that you could have because that's what gave me the drive to improve my life. And like that's the reason why I am where I am today. And 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 like I'm, I have I had low self-esteem pretty much my whole life, and then stumbled on some of self improvement maybe in grade eight or nine, and then I was I was just close. Like it, it started off. I was just like watching a bunch of self improvement videos, mm. and and it was it was like that honestly just for for a couple of years, and then and and then 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 finally I started working out, and I was just taking more action like a little bit at a time, and 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 in September of of twenty twenty two, I I made this like private story on Snapchat where I was like giving self improvement advice to my friends, which. Which really just helped hold me accountable, and 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 just like helping inspire other people, which which I loved, and then I yeah I I, I was just held accountable. Get, started doing a lot more like the podcast, started a business, and everything everything kind of just fell into place. And what do you put on that private and, it, Snapchat story? Pardon me. What do you put on that private Snapchat story? to motivate your friends to be the best version of themselves and to keep you accountable. It was, yeah, for sure. So I, I was basically just posting like the stuff I was doing day to day. And I found that really resonated with a lot of my friends because not, not really too many people just say you're like into self-improvement. And, and like, I, I love, I love doing that. And, and like, one, one sec. Take your time, it, Samuel. It was, it was just like, it was, just, it was just like there were, there were only there were only fifty people in there, which which like I I love that I, that I was motivating them, but I just want I just wanted to, to help more people and like help as many people as I could. So I, I decided to do the podcast, which 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 I'm having like a lot of fun doing right now, and and hope, hopefully expanding in the future. So uh, yeah yeah the all self improvement stuff it's 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 going great right now. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm basically, basically just sharing, sharing what I'm doing day to day, and then giving my friends little, little challenges that that they can do. No, I'm, I'm not really too sure like how many people do it, but still, still makes me feel really good. I'm like, I hear 
someone's like doing the challenges and and they're just like following my advice and it's, it's like helping them improve their life like it's the best feeling they can have totally and what what are some of those challenges what what have you found to be the most impactful challenge that you've given that people have followed or that has been useful to your own life yeah that's a, that's a good question probably probably just like hmm just just saying stuff about about like checking up on your friends and and like 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 just 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 like spreading spreading the message message of self improvement to other people. Like I I remember I remember I was I was say, I was I was saying a lot of stuff a lot of stuff about about like go go like text your friends right now and like give them, give them a compliment or 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 like like call call them call them up and and like do do some like self improvement later like. Like work out or or whatever, and then I was I was getting some some of my friends like tell, tell me that they they are closer closer with other people by by like doing my challenges, which I which I think is awesome. That is awesome, and you said before that it started from a place of insecurity. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I did. So, but then it, it kind of it kind of morphed into the opposite. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious about this because I feel like at 17. I was also insecure, but I didn't know that I was insecure. I didn't have any awareness of it. And so, and I, I definitely wouldn't be able to speak that to other people and tell other people that. So I'm curious for you as a 17 year old, where does the confidence and the understanding to speak your truth and speak the insecurity that you had or have, where does that come from? Where does the confidence come from? That's a, that's a, that's a great question. Mm. I, yeah, I, I really have to think about that. Prob, prob, probably just 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 a, just like say, saying it saying it like a, a little a little bit a little bit a little bit in the past, and then I, I, I was I was realizing like no one actually cares. Like mm. no one no one's gonna gonna like make fun of me or, or anything for like talking about self improvement like. Why do I need? Why do I need to need to be scared of doing this? And and then and then also just just like hearing the hear, hearing hearing like the good stories that, that other people are telling me about about like how how I'm helping them and like inspiring them to do well like that just motivated me to keep doing it. Hell yeah! And 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 yeah, like that 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 good feeling of inspiring people just it goes way beyond the feeling of. Of being scared, someone's gonna like judge it or like make fun of me. Hmm, that's amazing. And what what are your plans? Like, where where do you see your life going? You're you're 17 years old, but I'm curious. So honestly, I what what I, what I think is gonna happen is, is like because because I'm all, I'm already in business right now, like getting practical experience. Like I I think I'm I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna do gonna, gonna do really really well in business, like. Not too sure what kind of business I want to start. I think like something something self improvement related, and and then hopefully I can like launch a product or something that helps other people improve their lives, and and kind of do that through my podcast to get to 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 like, get get my first audience and then expand from there. But no, I'm I'm honestly not too sure. Definitely definitely keep doing the podcast or something along those lines, and then and and yeah, definitely definitely start a business. What, what about you? Like, what? Where do? Where? Where do you think your life was gonna go? When I was seventeen, or right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at seventeen, I really had never spent a lot of time looking at myself, so I couldn't give you a, a good answer, and I didn't really want to ask those difficult questions of myself because that would have required me to take responsibility for the direction that I was gonna go. So, I really had no clue at at seventeen. Um, and the fact that you have any idea is a, a very good sign and will hopefully put you on a faster trajectory than I was on to get to this point. Thanks, man. Yeah. Also, I'm, I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, when did you come up, when did you come up with the idea for the podcast? So. I'm like, how did, how did it come about? Yeah. So in July of 2020, I put out on Twitter, who wants to talk on the phone? And I would have such good phone conversations with people that I was like, oh, I should probably record these. And this episode, episode 337, is just an ode to before I even started and just the way it was where just getting to know people 
and learning about them and their story and trying to figure out life from their perspective a little bit. And yeah, that's how it started. And, you know, 337 episodes later, here we are today talking on the phone, doing the same thing we did when we started the whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that's awesome. Good for you. And keep, keep doing what you're doing too. Like I, like the whole ch- the whole challenge is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm like everything you're doing on the podcast. I love, I'm like, I, I, I know, there, I know there's so many people in the world that's impacting. So great job. Thank you, man. Is there anything I can help you with? Hmm, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think just like definitely, definitely the podcast is a big one. Like getting getting guests and like finding guests. Mm. And I'm like doing the podcast. Like those are two things that I've I really been having trouble with so far. Uh, okay. So who's the who's the dream guest for you? The dream guest. Or guests. That, that's, who are that's the, a good question. Who are the dream guests? Let me, let me, let me think about that. Think. You know, you know the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane? MJ DeMarco, baby. MJ DeMarco, yeah. He, he'd definitely be a big one. Mm. Tim Ferriss, too. Yeah. Um, Alex Hermosi. Yeah, Alex Hermosi's really blown up over the past year or two with yeah, it. he's for got sure. great it's advice it's mm-hmm. so alex hormozy yeah, tim ferris it's a good list and probably gary v as well yeah dude what is uh it are the people around you do they do most people in your high school know who Tim Ferriss is or Gary Vee or Alex Ramosi, or is that just a, a niche thing that you know about? I think Gary Vee tells me, like, I, I, I remember, I, 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 like, I, made a, I made a couple of friends uh, a, a few years ago just because, just like, we both like Gary Vee, which is awesome, and, and now they're, like, such good friends. So I think I see quite a few people my age know who Gary Vee is, but... The rest of them, not really. Interesting. That's so fascinating, man. That's so fascinating. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And the podcast, you you done any episodes yet? Or you you just launching it? How's that going? Yeah, so I've I've come up with maybe seven or eight, but it's 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 just like all, all of my friends and I'm like a, a couple people I know, a couple people I know who are, who are like doing pretty cool things. But no, no real big guests yet. That's good, man. I mean, personally, I didn't want any big guests until I had improved as an interviewer. You know, someone asked me when I was just getting started in August of 2020, I'd recorded a few episodes and they were like, what would you do if Gary Vee or Joe Rogan came on the podcast? And I said, honestly, I wouldn't want them on the podcast now. Like, I, I'm not good enough. And... I think there's something beautiful about even in the early stages of anything is like just being able to know that you're going to improve and that the best you're going to, the best episode for the podcast is probably 20 years away or 30 or 40. So if you, if you have that mindset, I, when I have that mindset, it gives me a lot of peace for knowing or understanding that some of the guests that are coming on today and, and gives me a level of just, it's all good. Like that you, maybe you're not getting the guests you want yet. Like you, you'll build into that. And that's a good thing. Does that resonate? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and yeah, like I, I, I also just, I also just, I get, I get my interview skills better and, and like just, just get confident in that. And then the big guests will be no problem. Yeah, there's also something interesting about like, and listen, you might know yourself way better. It sounds like you know yourself way better at 17 than I I did at 17. But it's like, it's hard for a lot of kids, I feel like, to find who they want to be at that age. Or they don't know who they are. And they're going to develop into someone new over the next 10 years. And yeah, I mean, I would just keep your mind open to all the possibilities you you can grow and change and develop and 
that that's my unsolicited advice. Yeah, man, for sure. And I don't. It it all just starts to with your mindset. I I think I think I think that's just a big one. Like believing that you can do anything you want mm. is the first step. Definitely. You you said here a challenge you wanted to leave people with is for the rest of the day carry a notebook around. When you tell yourself you can't do something or a limiting belief comes up, ask yourself why you are thinking that way and write down what you can do to change it and how you can do the thing that you tell yourself you can't. Is there an example that comes to mind from your own life of how you've done that? From my own life, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, probably the podcast, actually, that's, that's a huge one. Like, I was, I was, I was just, I was, I was, I was like, I was like, listen, I was listening to people's podcasts, and, um, and I was thinking, it, it looks so, it looks so cool to do this, but, but then, but I, I was like, I was like, oh, I, I can, and then, I, then I was thinking, like, why can't I, mm. like, it's probably it's probably such an easy thing to do. Just like starting starting up a podcast, like in, inviting some friends, getting getting them on, and and it, it it just like it looks it looks so intimidating to me. But but then I I just kept that I just kept asking myself like why why can't I why can't I do this? Like what makes me different from all these people? Like like we, we both start we all started and 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 like the same place. Like we all started with with zero views. Mm. So if they can do it, why can't I? It's a great mindset to have. H- how do you define or judge success for your podcast? Honestly, just just like comp- completing my goal and do it, doing, 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 doing my doing my best job, and and yeah, yeah, just like doing doing my best and having having no regrets. I love that. Is there any actual, is there any metric you use to determine if you've done your best or not? For me, for me, it was like, all right, I, I did a hundred episodes and if I could do a hundred episodes and I showed up for a hundred, then I could quit or then I can do something else, but I need to show up for myself a hundred times. And if I do that, that's a success. Do you have anything like that? It's okay yeah, if you don't, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, honestly, yeah, yeah. What? Just, just, just like having, being, being, being happy after, after, after I do a, after I do a podcast. Because, because like I, I, I remember when I was when I was first starting out. Every, every time I did a podcast, I was, I was just doubting, doubting myself so much. At the end, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, what, what if, what if people like don't, don't like this, or like, what, what, what if I, what if, what if I like. Didn't did a bad job or whatever. Like I, I, th- I think just 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 like sorry sorry about that. You good? Gotta get gotta get some water. Throw it super giant. Yeah, yeah. Just, just consistently being happy at, at at the at the end of every podcast. I I, th- I think that 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 that'll be like. If you had a billboard that could say anything in the world that everyone in the world would see, what would you put on that billboard? Good, good question. Got, got to think about that. Maybe, maybe like you're you're gonna die someday, something, something like that. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Don't don't. Don't think that's don't think that's too original. Maybe, like, yeah, like, like, like some, something, something like center, center, center around death. Maybe or, or like, 
like how 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 are you how are you 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 don't you don't like have 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 too have too much time left or like something something like that. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um. That, that's that's my best. Yeah. I love it, man. That's that's beautiful. I'll come back, back to you on it. <laughs> I love it. Do you have anything you'd like to plug or anything you'd like where anywhere you'd like to send people? So so yeah, just 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 my Instagram is at the Samuel James, and then I'll I'll be really, I'll be releasing info for like my podcast, my business, and all all that stuff on there. So so yeah, if if like you're if you're interested in hearing more. Uh, in in like maybe maybe a week maybe a week or two I'll I'll, I'll post my podcast on there. You guys you guys can check it out. And then yeah, if if someone wants to be on it, just to me DM on Instagram and I'll be back to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Samuel. I really appreciate your time, and I'm really I'm really looking forward to your journey. You already have so much wisdom for a 17 year old. So keep it up, man. Yeah, thank thank you. Thank you so thank you so much, Danny. Really, really appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for the call. All right, you too. You too. Have a good one. See you later. Peace. Samuel Games, ladies and gentlemen. What a legend. Seventeen years old. Pretty incredible. Let's see if we can get a couple more in here. What? Trey, welcome to the Danny Miranda podcast. How's it going today? Oh, it's not so. It's going very well. Love to hear that. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Dude. Sir, who am I speaking with, sir? You're speaking with Danny Miranda from the Danny Miranda podcast. Oh, no way. Oh, snap. I just connected my AirPods and I actually just got it. Hell yeah. That's pretty thick, man. Yeah, dude. How's your, how's your day going? It's going wonderful. Just talking to some incredible people, so. Life is good. I can imagine. I love that. I love that. Dude, you're running a marathon May 7th? And you started training 11 days yeah. ago? I started training not last Saturday, but the Saturday before. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm excited for that. What inspired you to, to run the marathon? Great question. So, I uh, it was one of my goals for the year. And one day I put up on my story, I put up all of my fitness goals my instagram story and then my girlfriend was like uh and running the marathon is one of them and my girlfriend was like oh there's a marathon may 7th we should sign up and i was like yeah let's do it and then not realizing you need like four months to train but i was like you know what fuck it i could do it so uh yeah two months about two months to train uh less than two weeks in but so far so good man. wow that that's wild what, what gives you the confidence or was it just the naivete no, no, no. So I've, uh, I'm like pretty athletic. I work out pretty much every day. I typically lift weights. So running is very different for me. But I thought I've done a few long distances before. Never marathon um, length. That's going to be the longest I've ever ran. But uh, yeah, but I ran like, uh, I did 12K yesterday morning. I ran like 33K. That's my max. But and I've done all of that without any training. Oh, wow. So I think with two months, it's, it's more than enough time to actually go in and, uh, and hit the 32K. Wow. What's 12K? 12K would be what? Six miles? Seven miles? Seven and a half miles. Yeah. Seven and a half. Nice, nice. And yeah. your girlfriend running it with you? She's doing the half. Got you. So she made you go yeah. all the way to the full and you you do the full, she does the half. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, my, my goal, my goal was to do the full, but like, she didn't, like, it wasn't even something I discussed with her. She was just like, oh, there's one on May 7th, let's do it. And I was like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love and that. She signed up for the half, I signed up for the full, so it's uh, May 7th, let's we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's great. You guys are, you know, motivating each other and, and keeping each other accountable to the highest version yeah, of yourself. Yeah. That's sweet. Definitely, yeah. And so it makes sense that the, your favorite person in the world, do you remember who you put? Yeah, it was the runner. Yes. Uh, How do you pronounce his name? Iliud. I think it's like Iliud Kipchake, Kipchoke, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like just binge watching videos from him yesterday. And 
you know, this guy is a beast. Like he he ran a marathon in under two hours. Oh my god! So under two he hours. Broke the record. Under two hours. He actually he actually broke the record. So similar to like you know the four minute mile. I I guess a, a bunch of people are gonna break it now, but regardless, he was the first person to do it, and his whole. I guess like his tagline is no human is limited. Mm. And this guy's like 36, I believe, 36, 37. So he's not even like a, a young guy necessarily, but he's a beast. He's from Kenya, um, sponsored by Nike. And, you know, now that I have no choice but to run like almost every day, I'm like just trying to tap into like fitness and like running and like really see how, like who's in this space and who's killing it. You get into Goggins at all or? Of course, though. That's like yeah. So I've, I've been lifting weights pretty much since high school, uh, just like going to the gym. How old are you I, now? I believe I'm 25. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, so I believe it was 2021. I got that. Uh, I got uh, his first book. Yes. Um, can't hurt me. I read that, and that's that's actually when I went running for the first time. Um, I I think I ran 5k in like 50 something minutes, like with taking breaks. Whereas, like, now I can do that in, like, under 20. Whoa. So it's, like, I've had massive growth. 5K, massive growth. You, it took I you, wait, 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 it took you 50 minutes to do a 5, so 3 miles, 50 minutes, and now it takes you under 20? Yeah, and there's a thing with that, uh, with that, um, because I have, like, a screenshot of it. I don't exactly remember what it was, but I think even with the time that I had in that screenshot, I might have paused it a few times. <laughs> I don't even think it was. So it was. It was probably over an hour that it took me to run that 5K because it's historically I'd never ran before. Like lifting weights and running are very, very different things. Um, and then I actually injured my left knee last year from running without like the right preparation and, and just like not realizing how bad it is in your body. So now that I'm good again, perfect time to run a marathon. <laughs> Dude, that. What do you think's been the biggest thing? to the improvement from going from 50 minutes to under 20 for a 5k? Uh, I guess one is consistency and another one is just like, I'll say just three things, consistency, self-belief and just pushing myself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Consistency, self-belief and pushing yourself. Which of those three was the hardest for you? And why is that? Or why was that? I don't know. There's just something about running that, you know, it's just something I don't want to do. It's it's almost like taking a cold shower, getting into a cold plunge. Yep. Um, Like I'm very happy to wake up and and go to the gym and hit like a pull or push your legs, whatever it is. Yep. But I just don't have that same happiness to wake up and, you know, put on my running shoes and run. Um, So like that consistency, it really is, it's something I need to continuously remind myself to do. Um, and even like, I'm already thinking of like after this marathon, I'm taking a break from running. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely the hardest thing I could be doing physically. Yeah, dude, I, I feel you on that. I think running is one of those things where it's just like, when you think about it and you're not running consistently, you're just like, oh, you know, even when you are doing consistently, I'm sure it's even more like, oh, do I have to do this again? But good on you, man, for yeah, doing it. It's, it's itchy. It's itchy like a, like an ice bath, man. Even if you pop out and you have that like high, that kind of like runner's high after a, an ice plunge, you don't want to do it a second time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's facts. After this, I'm going in an ice bath, and I'm I'm already not looking forward to it. So I'm just yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Y- you said here a challenge you want to leave people with to live a better life is be slow to anger. In all situations, I believe. I think it's... You yeah, said, yeah. Why is that? Be slow to anger in all situations. Why is that something you would like to leave people with? You know, I feel like it's something that I'm learning more and more, uh, just how important it is, because a lot of time, you know, with... Like, I'm in a very new relationship. I've, I've been dating my girlfriend for like four months, and... I've already learned so much from those four months, right? Mm-hmm. In, in regards to little things that happen where, you 
know, it may lead to like a fight or, you know, just like miscommunication. A lot of times being slow to anger allows you to cure another person's point of view. Mm. It may be completely different to what you initially thought it was. Or because you're able to then shift and again, like see things from their point of view, you're able to see why things happen in a, in a certain way versus the way you would have liked it to happen in your head. Um, so just being slow to under and so slow to anger and like quicker, quick to understand them, um, it, it leads to just better relationships in general. And I feel like a lot of relationships end or limited because of a lack of understanding, right? And it's, uh, it's usually because people are just like, they don't really hear, to hear another side of the story or to hear uh, another point of view because they're already so clouded by their judgment, which is the result of them just like, you know, quickly becoming angry. I didn't explain that well, but that's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it sounded better in my head. No, dude, you, you did explain that well, and it's very wise of you. W- what do you think has contributed most to your to slow your anger down? I think just also knowing that I make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I would prefer people to be slow to anger with me because like I, I'm of course not perfect. Mm. So it's like if, if I'm not perfect, I can't you know, then be angry with the next person uh, without at least trying to see their point of view, see their perspective. Um, and in that way, it's like, you're, you know, you're both able to learn from each other. That's beautiful. And, and so true yeah. and well said, yeah. you said here for topics you wanted to discuss starting a business after getting fired from a tech job. What, how's that going for you? Yeah. So it's, um, I'm about like a little less than two months into it. Um, so it's, uh, essentially starting an agency, which is focused on content on like video content. So like Instagram reels, um, TikTok, and just like overall content, for like a, a brand's website or like socials, whatever it is. Um, so far it's, it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting process because I've worked in early startup tech for the last like two and a half years, three years. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're so early in a startup, you know, you're able to see, the way things happen. Like, like for example, the last company I worked at, I actually joined right before the product went live. So I, I joined the week it went live, and then it's like I saw how the growth happened. Um, you know, I, I came from a company with like a very successful CEO, very successful team, and I've always wanted to do my own thing. Um, so now I'm doing it myself, and I'm quickly realizing that, you know, things don't always happen exactly how you have them in mind. Yeah. And there's a lot of different tweaks and there's a lot of uh, businesses, really a lot of um, operation at the beginning before it gets to the fun part. So I feel like right now I'm very much still in the building stage and I feel like I'm a operations manager. Um, but overall I've, I've, uh, I've a pretty thick website. I just built. it's going live on Monday. So like a few new tweaks, but, um, so far, I'm like I'm proud of the work that I've done, um, and I'm excited to really just like double down on this journey mm. and see where it takes me. Do you have anywhere to send people to check it out? Yeah, yeah. So the the website it's called viralvision.co. So .co. Cool. And yeah, and, and for a little bit of context, so um, we've actually done a ton of work with uh, some brands like uh, Guinness, um, another brand called Lambe Whiskey, um, a brand out of Toronto called uh, Stephilioff. And so, so w- where this work has come from was um, prior to this agency being started officially, my brother is actually like a full-time um, producer, video director. And I've been working with him for, you know, over the past decade. Um, and I've been helping him on the business side of things. So we're going live with the website on Monday. We already have a bunch of case studies and like work that we've already produced. Um, and now we're really focusing specifically on e-commerce. But um, yeah, there's like, you know, it's, it's not like a brand new business with like zero experience. We have a ton of experience. We've got a ton of examples. Um, we're just now pivoting into like a new space and really doing it full time. What, what are you guys helping e-commerce businesses with exactly? So with their, essentially 
actually helping brands tell their story using short form video content. Gotcha. So the type of content they would post on like your video, uh, their Instagram reels, they'll post on your TikTok. Like TikTok is really controversial right now for everything going on. <laughs> yeah. But essentially just, just overall video content. Love it. Yeah, that that's super cool. And yeah. That's where the world is going. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Is there anything I can help you with? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, uh, so I've, I've been able to grow my TikTok decently over the last few months. I think I'm at like 90 something K, nice. but I'm, I'm seeing that like with the whole tech, with the whole startup thing, Twitter really is where everything goes down. Um, so I like, I haven't necessarily cracked the code there yet, but, um, yeah, we'd love to just like engage with you on Twitter and, um, I think just like, you know, for example, if, if I could go, I'm going live to the website on Monday. Um, I don't know if this is like in the realm of what you can do, but if you could be like, hey, check out, you know, Trey's, um, you know, Trey, check out Trey's uh, business. You know, he does short form video content for brands or whatever. Maybe like uh, I could send you an example. If we even post something like that, I don't know if that's too much of an ask if it is absolutely fine, but something like that would be, uh, would, I think would go a long way. I appreciate the ask. I, that's not something I could see myself doing, but I can see myself following you because you seem like a cool dude. Absolutely. So, no, for sure, for sure. I just followed you, man, and I I wish you nothing but success on your journey, and I'm excited to see how viral vision goes. And dude, you're fu- you're jacked as hell. Good shit, bro. <laughs> we love to see that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. So, and thanks for the call, bro. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this. I filled this out randomly last night, but uh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You never know what you're going to get. Thank you for your energy, sure. man. Thank you for talking about running and, and marketing. And I appreciate what you're putting out into the world. Keep going, bro. Appreciate it. Have a great day, man. You as well. Peace. Peace. Trey, what a guy. All right. I think we'll, let's hit one more. This is a lot of fun. I hope I can do this again sometime soon. Yo, 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 this is Danny Miranda, and you're on the Danny Miranda Podcast. How are you doing today? Oh, hey, Daniel. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? I, I'm good. I'm good. I was just doing some work, trying to create this new program around helping people build new habits through small atomic experiments, seven days trying new habits, and just um, kind of exploring different options, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. You didn't answer the first time. I was going to leave you a, a voicemail the second time, but you came through on the pickup. Love to see that. <laughs> you know, I was actually going to screen this call. I don't know if you know that uh, like Google Pixel has that feature. <laughs> and I was like, I don't pick up on no numbers. I, I'm <laughs> Me glad, too. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you called and I'm glad I did this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you picked up as well. What, what's what been the biggest challenge for building this new accountability program that you're you're doing? Yeah, I think I think for me it's been uh, a couple things. I think distribution has probably been the primary challenge. Yeah, where I don't have an existing audience, and I'm trying to do this in a very aligned way, mm-hmm. where um, the incentives align. Existing about accountability platforms don't really have that. When they penalize you for failing, they make money and they take a cut of that. Right. And I'm trying not to do that, but. Um, you know, it's it's hard to basically explain explain to people when you have a have a quite a unique business model and um and when when I when you kind of do a pay what you want model, which is what I'm doing, I think people don't take it as seriously. And what is it? It's an app or it's a website? How do you interact it's with it? It's a website. Very cool. I don't know if you know, but when I started in, I started putting out content on on a blog in March of 2020. And I had this thing called streaks where people would email me every day and they would, I would update their streak on my website as accountability for everyone. So very similar I love that. idea or, or at least in the same ballpark. Yeah. I actually did not know that. that that's actually amazing. Why did you, do you still do that? I don't do that to this day, but I found it really helpful when I was just starting my own streaks. Like one of them that I was building was a 60 minute meditation habit, 60 minute a day meditation habit. And that was super helpful. And it was just by having and posting it. And there were like probably like five to 10 other people, I would guess, who were also posting their own things and their own streaks. And it was just a, a really helpful way to stay accountable. So 
how does yeah that's that's why I, mm -hmm, go ahead how does habit gym look like is there a website yet is it live or is it being it, built yeah you know it's a website it's live uh we've been live for um almost basically like i think 20 months now oh wow and uh yeah and you know we've got hundreds of people have gone through the program and benefited from it but um i think i struggle to kind of do or organic organic growth Got you. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, honestly, how it started was really, I I started with Google Forms and Discord. Like that was a product where Love it. I I emailed people a small little check in every week, and I created a little plugin to post their answers to a shared Discord group, and created a group accountability program, and people paid for that. So it was kind of like you know made me realize like okay, there's some value here. I, I knew it from my own experience that it's a pretty lonely process when you're working on self improvement. You have yeah. to make a lot of sacrifices, and if people around you aren't invested, then, you know, um, that's a problem. So uh, just kind of finding that community of like-minded people. And so I've been, you know, creating that slowly. So cool, man. What's the, what, what is the actual URL? Uh, it's thehabitgym.com. Cool. Just want to check it out while we're talking so I could get a sense for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually curious from, you know, your perspective how, like, actually, I, I'm, I totally forgot that I had signed up on this form oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wait, Danny, Danny who? Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm kind of curious, like what, like, what's your kind of approach with, with doing these calls? Are you just, you know, catching up with your listeners or, um, anything else? Yeah. So I wanted to, I started the podcast in really July of 2020 when I put out on Twitter, who wants to talk on the phone? And I had such amazing conversations that I was like, oh, I should probably record these. And then those recorded yeah. conversations turned into the podcast. And I realized that I haven't done that in a long time. Like that's the origins of it. So let me get back to my roots. And I was like, oh, let, let me, let me do that. And so now I'm doing it and I'm just connecting with people who are down to connect on, on Twitter. That's, that's amazing. I actually didn't know that you started in 2020 because your podcast is, I feel like grown so large that I'm kind of shocked. It's only been, you know, two and a half years. Yeah, man. I, it's funny. I, it's, it's funny how it appears to other people. I mean, it's just like, it's, I'm just chugging along, you know, like doing my thing. And <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, it sounds like what, 20 months ago was probably same time the habit gym started as well. Right. Yeah. I started, I started working on it essentially like June of June of 2021. Oh, okay. but I quit my job in gotcha. December of 2020. So yeah. Got you. December of 2020. And you quit your job to do this? Well, um, I don't know. So <laughs> I, I used to be at Google for like five years and nice. I, I was like, okay, um, I feel like I've gotten what I want out of a nine to five. And I felt like my, I was living my life in the fragments of time that like my job spared and I didn't like that feeling. And wait, I, wait, say I that again. Like I wasn't, you were living your life I, in fragments of time. In the fragments of time that work spared. So, I see. you know, the kind of few hours in the evening and like the two day weekends and that's kind of it, right? That's, that's your life. Yeah. Uh, and that felt like the other way around, you know, what I wanted to do is essentially build a solid life and, and fit work around that rather than the other way around. Yep. And my hypothesis was that, Hey, if I build a solid foundation of, of healthy habits where I kind of have my, um, you know, my kind of health and happiness check with, diet, exercise, meditation, and if I can figure out how to be effective by myself, um, which is like creating structure around the work that I'm doing and figuring out how to prioritize and actually execute well, uh, everything else will kind of follow from there. So I spent six months essentially building these like systems out and experimenting pretty heavily with just different types of habits. I went to a 10 day silent meditation retreat. I, I assume you've heard of Vipassana. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I have some so questions that. about that. Mm -hmm. I have some yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, it changed my life. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it just kind of led me to realize that, you know, ha building habits is all about, is all about really just, you know, you have to keep trying and iterating. It's, it's a lifelong process. And so it kind of led me to build a habit gym. Um, and so that's kind of how that, how that worked out. So the Vipassana retreat led to habit gym becoming a reality. Yes, actually, wow. uh, I pretty much copied 
the Vipassana model. Uh, I like how much do you know about Vipassana? I'd love to tell you more about it. I, I, I sound like a missionary right now. No, but, no. <laughs> this is I, I love it because I my life changed forever. I did I started the podcast because I went to the middle of nowhere for five days and and I meditated an hour in the morning, an hour at night, and just walked around wow. during the day. And so like when nothing was there or felt like nothingness, yeah. what came up was yeah. the podcast that I needed to do this. And so it sounds like a similar experience. So please explain to people like who might not know what Vipassana is and also like the experience. I'm so curious. Yeah. So Vipassana is a 10 day silent meditation retreat. And so it sounds very intimidating for a lot of people, you know, 10 days, you're going to go without your devices, not going to talk, talk to anyone at all. And, uh, it sounds very intimidating, but it's, literally designed for people who have never meditated before. Uh, and so you kind of go to this course and the only kind of preparations they tell you to do is just kind of come with the right attitude of like, I know it's going to be, it's going to be challenging, but I'm just going to have a, what they call a strong determination Mm. to, to finish, to finish it. And, um, yeah, basically the course is every single day you, meditate for essentially 10 hours and you wake up at four, four o'clock in the morning and you're meditating until, uh, about I think 8 PM and you have small breaks in the middle for, for food and, you know, some short rest time right after that. But otherwise you're meditating all day. And then there's one hour of discourse in the evening, which is kind of meant to contextualize all the um all the practices you've been doing with with that discourse sorry to cut you off with that discourse is that you speaking to other people about it or or is that someone giving you a lecture what is the discourse entail exactly yeah so um the the interesting thing about vipassana is that it's a completely silent course and so you're actually not allowed to engage with the other co-meditators in any way Mm. (laughs) this includes this includes gestures and even eye contact. Oh so you're not supposed to uh, look at each other at all. Even the dining hall, everyone is facing in the same direction. Everyone is fa- facing against basically towards the wall. And the old students literally sit right next to the wall. That like in front of them, all they see is the wall because you know they can actually kind of take that level of, of isolation. But yeah, so you're not supposed to look at anyone at all. So the discourse is just a recording of of Goenka Ji, who kind of started this track, who started this organization about uh, about 50 years ago, and it's it's just like a one hour recording of him uh, explaining, uh, you know, and contextualizing all the meditation that you've done that day and and the reason behind it. So yeah, um, if you do have questions though, there, there is one exception after lunch, basically, and after the discourse, there is um, a short period of time where you can ask the teachers questions. So you're not allowed to engage with the co-meditators. Uh, and that's a very, there's a very intentional reason behind this. It sounds extreme, but, uh, the, the reason is that, is that you shouldn't concern yourself with other people's progress on this journey. Mm. If you're talking to someone else, a co-meditator and you're like, you're like, Oh, well, you know, I wasn't able to like focus on this. And they're like, Oh, well, like I was experiencing all these sensations and like, I feel like, you know, I've really kind of gotten it down and you know, this is amazing. I'm feeling all these things. You start to feel like, well, why am I not feeling that way? But Mm. ultimately their reality does not affect yours or influence you. Uh, so you kind of have to, the point is that it's an individual journey. And that's, that's, that's one of the lessons that I've copied over into habit gym where I, you know, you can, I, I try to stress to everyone that, you know, you can see each other people's progress, but at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You have to go on your own journey and it, the, the, that realization that everyone has their setbacks and, and successes, I think is important to like, to see for everyone. Yeah. Hell yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, the, and yeah, go ahead. keep going. No, keep going. Yeah. So there are a bunch of other cool things about the process. So the, the thing that resonated with me, uh, about it was that, uh, you know, Typically, I'm a little, I'm very skeptical of these type of spirituality courses and things like that. Uh, the reason I'm skeptical is I think we've commer- we've commercialized a lot of them, mm. and I'm always like, okay, is this like a money making thing, or is there actually like some some real intent behind 
you know, behind teach, teaching something valuable. And sometimes it can be both, but, you know, sometimes it can be just the money-making thing. The, the really beautiful thing about Vipassana is that it's completely free to go to. So 10 days, you don't pay for accommodation, you don't pay for teaching, you don't pay for food. At the end of the program, if you feel like you benefited and want to pay it forward, you can you can contribute to them. Wow. And they're actually very strict about this where if you if you haven't done Vipassana yet and you're like, hey, I want to give you guys a million dollars, I want to give you guys $10 million, they will not accept your money. You have to complete a 10-day course. And so the way the way that works is like they've basically created these aligned incentives where the organization will only survive and thrive if the people who are going through this are benefiting from it and believe it's something that should continue. Um, and from that model, they've grown from zero to 200 plus centers across the world in like 50 years. So it's, it's very impressive that way. And again, that's something I've, I've copied in Habit Gym where um, I let people co- go through the course for free. And at the end, you know, they can pay if they, if they benefit from the, from the experience. Wow. That's really fascinating since I'm building out a course right now and that makes me want to, do that how has that model worked for you um i think it, there's been uh it's been it's been hit or miss i think gotcha. you know people really resonate with that when i when i do my user interviews everyone's like i really i really feel like you know you 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 care about this and and at the same time uh i, I should mention i the way i i hold people accountable to actually doing this doing the program is is that i i still i still charge them money if they fail but that money goes to charity I saw so that. I think the, the, that whole idea where they're like, "Oh, okay, you know, you only, you really, literally only make money if I succeed," that is something that really resonates with people, and I think that that's gone well. But um, I think there are a lot of people that you know take advantage of it as well, and so you know, there 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 are places where I have to, I'd say, optimize the messaging maybe uh, to to kind of like get get a little bit out of it because you know, for something like Vipassana where you're going in person. There's that there's that level of commitment and there's a level of like you're not just gonna kind of walk away without giving them anything uh, if you really believed in it. But in the internet, it's so easy to just kind of go your own way and like things to just get lost in the void. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You you said here in other topics to discuss being a well-fed artist, and you cited <laughs> Larry David as the epitome of that. Why why does that why is that so important to you, or why is does that concept being a well-fed artist resonate so deeply with you? Yeah, I think, um, I, I, I kind of think of everything I do as, as art, even this, mm. this project habit gym, I, I've approached it with a very intentional mindset where I want to create aligned incentives and, and I want to kind of create something beautiful and, and impact people. Right. I, I essentially what I think of it is like, I'm creating an experience. Mm. And, um, th- you know, this is not the only thing I want to do. I, I enjoy writing. I have, I have my own blog. I have a podcast with one of my best friends where we talk about the, uh, you know, um, experience of, of being entrepreneurs and forging your own path as an Indian American. And so, um, I kind of think of all of these as, you know, expressions of, of myself. And I think, you know, with a creator economy now, there's, there's always this kind of, aspect of like okay how do you monetize your your content and while i think you know that's great that people can live off their work uh i think it can also it can also lead you to be maybe um is stray from your original vision and and uh you know pander for lack of a better word to to what audiences want Mm -hmm. and you, you find this trend a lot and i think i think i saw you talking about this maybe was if you look at all the if you look at all these like successful fiction writers, sorry, nonfiction writers, everyone's venturing into fiction now. Yep. And so, you know, you have like Tim Ferriss and the, and the likes and they're, and cause that's what they want to do. But like, yeah, maybe there wasn't a market for it before or like they, they weren't sure, but now they're at the point where they're financially independent and they can just create whatever art they want. And I think that that's where the best art comes from, from a place of you not having to, uh, like think about anyone else, but you just, creating this thing that's true to you and expressing yourself very freely. And that's, that, that can only happen. I think when you're a well-fed artist, as opposed to a starving artist. So a starving artist is someone who doesn't have the money and maybe has to like, um, you know, occasionally do stuff that compromise their vision in order to make ends meet. A well-fed artist is someone who has financial independence and can, can do whatever the hell they want. 
and I think that that creates the best art just because of that independence and because of that authenticity. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. How do you personally do that? Yeah, so I I, I personally do that with like I try to keep my I, I try to keep incentives aligned. That's kind of how I think about it. Mm. Uh, so um, with Habit Gym, sure it's my business, but I try to keep. I try to keep the you know the incentives aligned where everyone is benefiting from it. Um, but for more personally, let's say for my blog, right? I don't monetize it at all. Like I refuse to put affiliate links or anything like that. Where I just try to have it be like uh, an expression of my like of my story and just you know walk people through it. And there's a lot of like there's a lot of I think growth tactics that I could use yep. to to do it and be more aggressive with like my my email list and things like that but I, I think of it this way like a majority of the people that read or a large chunk of the people that read my blog are my friends mm -hmm. and if i it's like I, I i think of i think of all my subscribers as like if i wouldn't treat my friends this way then i you know i don't want to treat my subscribers that way um so i it's kind of like uh, yeah treating that like a little more um taking that a little more seriously uh and then even with the, the podcast it's, it's like it's just me and my friend having the conversations we have normally and just recording them. Right. So it's kind of like we're creating them for us first. And then if other people enjoy it too, that's great, but primarily creating it for yourself. Yeah, man, that's a beautiful way to operate. And that's kind of why I've decided to go in the route of less zero ads and more in the route of promoting and building my own products because of exactly what you're talking about. The authenticity comes through and i really like your website i just played around with it a little bit and i it, it's designed really well and it's a, a beautiful experience it's simple but it's it's nice it's really cool so great stuff thank you and for a challenge you would like to leave people with does anything come to mind uh i forget i forget what i what i wrote on that so but, um i think it was uh, yeah, I, uh, I have it right here for you if you if you want yeah. a little reminder. No, I think it was something to the effect of um, uh, essentially, you know, the realization that caused that that led me to build Habit Gym was that I don't think we confront our, you know, our truth enough. I don't think we're honest mm. with ourselves about about our failures and our shortcomings, and you can only fix them when you uh, when you understand them. So I guess the challenge I would I would you know, ask, ask everyone to do is just, you know, look yourself in the mirror and honestly be like, you know, like, how am I doing? And like, how can I do better? And mm. like really being honest about whether you're, whether you're doing well or not and, and, and pushing yourself to do better. Cause I think, I think a lot of times we get trapped in the stories that other people tell us or the stories that we tell ourselves, but, um, that's kind of when growth stops, right? When you stop looking at yourself honestly and openly. Yes. And to quote you, you said every week, ask yourself what mistakes you made and how you can do better. Simple, effective. And if more people did that, we would all collectively live in a better world, I believe. So, dude, thank yeah, you. That's so very well put. <laughs> yeah. Who wrote that? <laughs> uh, dude, thank you so much for, for spending the time here. I learned a lot and I'm really grateful for you and thehabitgym.com. If people want to check that out, I'm going to register and check it out. But anywhere else you'd like to send people? Um, I also have a podcast. It's called You God, Crafting an Intentional Life. Hmm. Um, you can go to anchor.fm slash J-U-G-A-A-D-P-O-D, You God Pod. Cool. We'll link that yeah, below. Thank you so much, Danny. Really appreciate you taking, like, taking the time. I'm I'm kind of surprised that this even happened, but you know, very pleasantly so. Yeah, well, me as well. I'm I'm happily I'm not surprised that this happened because I made it a reality, but yeah. I'm very happy it did and I learned a lot and I'm really grateful for you, man. Thank you for for what you do and how you're showing up in the world. No, same here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And you excited too. to follow along the journey. That was the end of a wonderful episode, a call in show. I enjoyed that so much. You guys are phenomenal. The people who I spoke to, I mean, we only got through a few of the many, but so grateful for everyone who dropped their name, number, and all the answers to the questions that I, I left before. 
People who listen to the show are the best, aren't they? I mean, you're the best for listening. You're the best for watching. Thank you so much for getting to this point in the episode. If you enjoyed any bit of this episode and any bit of this struck you in any way, go ahead and tweet it. Go ahead and share it with a friend. Quote, put your favorite quote on social media, on Instagram stories, on YouTube. I'm My cup is so filled right now from talking to so many incredible people. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I feel very honored and humbled that so many wise, interesting, kind, optimistic people follow along the show who are trying to build a better life. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for if you dropped your any of your information in the Google form. Hopefully, I can very much imagine this becoming a once a month thing to incredible success. And I appreciate you. Be well, everybody. Peace.